Welcome back everybody to Matt's haircut videos. I am giving my friend Isaac a haircut today and he has requested a medium zero fade traditional on the sides and top here. So as usual, I begin with a large length, like a number two, what you see here, a number two to remove the majority of this bulk here. All the way on the sides. Just kind of removing bulk here. I will eventually be coming back around because the length requested is a zero on the sides. What we won't be doing is going too aggressively high. It will not be a high fade. And I'm just keeping this towards the middle here. And I'm trying my very best not to go too high here around the crown area. I like to reserve this area for some clipper over comb as I come back. And my friend Isaac here likes to wear a traditional men's part. So I'm going to be extremely careful around this side not to kind of eliminate his part here. And this is where the tricky work is going to come later on. As I go and progress throughout the haircut, I will return to this area to do some more careful clipper over comb blend on the sides here. Because as you can see, as I'm cutting it dry, it's already beginning to want to stick out. It might, I won't call it a problematic area, but it is an area if you're not too careful, the tendency is just to take it too high, too short, and it will be a high fade instead of a mid fade. So I'm going to return to this later on. But right now I'm just laying the foundation with the number two. And I'm spinning the chair. And I'm going over with the two back where I started. And this is my way of kind of double checking my work. After using a certain length going all the way around, now I'm coming back with the same length. Now I'm going to drop down to the length of a one and a half. And I'm just going to stay right under that number two. Number two is here. And I'm just going to cut into it lightly. Not much of a big difference. But it's just a method of blending from one larger length to a lower. Gradually. Same idea. Spinning the chair. Retracing my steps. Same steps that I did with the number two. Keeping it nice and low here. At this point, I'm at the medium side of his head here. I'm not quite low, I'm not high, I'm in the middle. And again, I will return again, all the way to the other side, double checking my work, going the same direction that I came. And this is a method of retracing your steps and double checking your work as you go. Just like that. Next one, I could use a number one or a half, but in this case, one or half are similar. So I'm just going to use this to kind of get started on the short, the extreme short that's going to come with the zero blending into the length of a half. Number one works okay too, but I like the length of a half because it takes it down just a little bit shorter. All the way around. Just the same. Here I am again with the half. Moving the ear. And what remains after this is zero coming into half. Still working with half on the sides. Turning the chair. Retracing my steps once again. Just the same way I started 
the same way I returned. Okay, so here comes the part where I am now going to enter with zero. And being that my friend Isaac here, he wears a nice beard and we'll get into that a little later. I'm only gonna keep the zero about this high sideburn area right here. So not too much work done in this area. I just wanna be careful and respectful to that. When a gentleman wears a nice long beard as you see here, I don't recommend going too low and blending too low without their permission. So just to be safe, I'm just gonna keep it nice and low right here. I'll create a little bit of a ridge and a line that we can blend down as we return. But as you can see, I am cutting a zero length into half, one and a half, two. Are all these lengths necessary? No, but it is a method. And I like to consider this an elementary method. Here comes zero into the length of a half. The lengths are so short, it almost blends in just right. What remains is just kind of like a little ridge right here. And we can take care of that a little later with an Andes Master or a wall or whatever barbers use these days to uh, blend lines. Again, zero is going into the length of a half. So we're at this sideburn area again, and I'm just gonna keep it about right here. Right there. Don't wanna go too low. And again, I'm gonna retrace my steps, the same process, and I'm gonna go back to where I came from retracing my steps back to where I came and this is my way of double checking my work as I return to where I started there we go Okay, so I'm gonna use one of these brushes right here just to kind of comb out the fine hairs here. And what this is gonna help me do is that it's gonna help me expose the lining here, lining here, lining down here. This fine brush is helping me clear out the excess hair that is falling off his hair as I cut. These are very useful brushes here, inexpensive, very helpful and what it's helping me do is expose the lining that needs to be uh, blended in with another clipper there we go so the clipper that i will be using is uh andis uh fade master here and there's a trick with these having them open Having them closed makes a difference. If you can tell, that blade gets nice and close right there. That means it's going to cut really defined, really short. And as it, when you have it more open, as you can see the teeth exposed, when it's more open, uh, you're able to do uh, some blending without doing uh, too much uh, indentation, too much uh, aggressive cutting. So I'm going to keep it nice and open here. And the motion that I'm using is just kind of like a rocking motion like this, just like that. And you can see here. And I kind of go back and forth. I kind of go this way with it, going this way, or I come this way with it, going this way. 
and at this point the clipper is not flat on the skin it is not on the skin it's almost on an angle just like that I'm gonna close it a little bit just to get this detail here. And then I opened again. And again, this area, we're gonna return to this area, this parted area. And we're gonna come back to that a little later. I'm just gonna blend that down just a little bit. And this right here, we're just gonna blend that up a little bit there. And this takes a little patience, takes a little time, and a little practice, because this is the essence of a fade. Basically, from nothing to something, and of course, diminishing lines, diminishing bulk and weight and shadow. Here we are at the bottom. I'm going back and forth, opening and closing, as I see fit, and usually as I get lower and closer to zero, is when it's closed. And as I work my way higher, coming up this way, it's open. Turning the chair. And here's a little bit of lining right here. I'm gonna close the clipper down. The lower I am to zero, closer I am to zero, the closer the clipper can be. I'm opening, and the higher I can blend. A little low there, a little low, a little low with a zero. Open, the higher and better I can blend. Nice and low here, clippers closed. After I kind of just rock that out a little bit, then I open and I'm able to go a little higher. Moving the ear out of the way. A little bit of blending here. And I'm going to close it just to blend in this sideburn area right here. Close, closing, and opening. Closing and opening, just like that. Being very careful, very careful. Okay. I think this one's coming out nicely here. I'm gonna clean my clipper off. Clean this off a little bit. And I'm just gonna go back over again. Just gonna go back where I started. Over again. And perhaps we know that Isaac combs his hair to the side. Top has not been cut yet. And at this point, we can do some clipper over comb as we work our way back. Clipper over comb here. Clipper over comb. Kind of blending down these corners here. Blending down these corners. Same thing, I'm just retracing my steps. Do some clipper over comb here. Right here, the high occipital areas, the 
area I like to recommend being extremely careful with. Unless someone requests a super high fade, then you can take it all the way up. But for shape and form, we leave it just a little bit longer. We reserve this area for some scissor over comb, clipper over comb. That way he can have a sense of shape and form in his haircut. Some more clipper, clipper over comb here. Careful around this area we discussed earlier. I will return to this area with some scissor work, maybe some thinning shear, and maybe just a little bit more clipper over comb. I'm just being cautious. Because if anything, if you leave it too long, you could always blend it down. But if you go too short, well, you gotta wait a few weeks for that one to grow out. But I like to continue on with the rest of the haircut to give the haircut a chance to start to develop its shape and form, come back and return, and kind of bridge uh, things together. Just like that. Just a little bit right here. And the reason why I like to continue moving, moving, is if you stay put in one area and just focus and focus and focus in one area, and you don't continue with the rest of the haircut, that might slow you down. Not that there's any kind of a hurry, but if you progressively move around the haircut, then return to a certain area, you'll, other things will start to stand out. Little lines, little ridges, little edges begin to stand out in your work. And you were able to see them, identify them quickly, and continue with your work. There we go. Okay, so now let's talk about the top here. On the norm, I would be wetting the hair profusely. I like to do a uh, wet scissor hair cutting. But for this top, because I'm weary about this standing up too much and the, this corner cowlick area right here and the parted area to be standing up just a little too much, I'm gonna be cutting the crown area here with clipper, possibly this top center area. And then I'll finish off and bridge off with some dry scissor work here towards the front. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is for variety's sake. So I'm going to kind of comb the hair down. Knowing that he combs his hair side and then back, I'm going to comb it down. And I'm just going to visually ignore this area right here because this is considered his front. I'll return there with some scissor work. And then this is his top. And I'm going to work on the crown just like this here. Carefully lifting up the hair carefully testing it out see when you cut hair dry you're able to see the response and reaction immediately of your work when you cut the hair wet sometimes you got to do a blow dry or you really got to wait until the hair is able to be able to comb in place to see your results so for this crown area cowlick area here i'm just going to take it easy and I'm just gonna cut it nice and dry, going in a circular motion here. And I'm gonna bridge this work into the center here. Bridge it into the center. Totally ignoring that front right there. I'm gonna start on the side. And I'm picking up the hair, going all the way to the other side. Knowing that he combs his hair to the side, I'm picking it up at its opposite direction. At its opposite direction, working my way back. Knowing that this side here is usually a little longer because it's been combed to the side for so many years, it has a tendency to be a little bit longer. So keep an eye out for that. 
if you ever have a haircut like this. Finally, I'm bridging all the way to the crown here, towards the back. Mm -hmm. And since I did some work on that side, I'm gonna ask him to look this way a little bit here, and I'm gonna comb the hair down this way, just like this. In this area, because it combs to the side this way, this area near the part, right here, always had to, has the tendency to remain long. So I'm gonna comb the hair this direction. I'm gonna pick it up. And I'm just gonna uh, smooth that out with the clippers as you see here. Not too short, not too short, because sometimes customers rely on that extra length to be able to hold the rest of the hair down. Thank you. And I'm just gonna watch out for this little area here. Knowing that my friend uses a pomade or gel or grease to hold it down, this area as it's standing out now shouldn't be too much of a problem. Once you style and comb, that should be able to lay down. Combing it back in place. And I'm going back to double check my work here. There we go. So this front has not been cut right here. That has not been cut. Only the high side, high corner, and high center right here. Just double checking here. No need to take too much off, but this is clipper over comb on the top. And I am double checking my work, making sure there are no long spots, missing spots, any steps. Just kind of smoothing it down. There we go. And now would be a good time to kind of brush his hair to the side, take a break from the clipper work here. And if I were to just leave it that way, it would actually look pretty nice with a little extra length here in the front and his part. But I am gonna scissor down that front just a little bit. Just a little bit here. So I'm gonna comb it out right here towards the front. I'm gonna push it out, pull it out. And I think I'm just gonna take about that much off. Just a little bit here. Just a little bit there. I'm already coming into the area that I cut with clippers. Again, push it out a little bit. I'm just trimming that down just a tiny bit because my friend Isaac here likes to wear the front just a little bit longer, shorter towards the top and crown. Pulling out just a little bit here. There we go. And bridging blending into what was already cut with clippers. And if necessary, perhaps pick it up with the comb, just like this. Just a double check. Brush his head. There we go. And double checking again here. Just double checking my work. This is all freehand. This is called freehand. Sometimes with these haircuts, it's just more, it's a matter of feeling. Feeling whether the front is long enough, the top crown is short enough, and just by looking at it, you can tell the difference. I'm gonna comb this down. And the same way I combed it down to do some clipper work is the same way I'm gonna do a little bit of scissor work, just a little bit right here. And if you notice, as I begin to comb, his hair already wants to fall into place. It just wants to go that way, and that's great. There we go. And after this is just basically a, a nice uh, hot steam shave and a tune-up here. <laughs> 